So what you are seeing now on the board is an impedance triangle. This impedance triangle is basically a right angle triangle. So in this impedance triangle we will try to you know represent the resistance, impedance and reactance as the three corners or three sides of a right angle triangle. As you know let us see let us say that this is the zero degree line. So resistance is always on the zero degrees line and reactance Jx this is inductive reactance as I told you if your reactance is just plus Jx it is an inductive reactance. J it represents that that particular quantity is at plus 90 degrees slide. So where is plus 90 degrees? This is plus 90 degrees no isn't it if this is 0 this is plus 90 degrees and minus 90 degrees will be downside isn't it. So J XL and uh, the closing side will be a impedance. Similarly if you represent uh, if you want to represent a capacitive reactance for capacitive reactance I told you have to take minus J XC. So minus J indicates minus J is nothing but what it is one at an angle minus 90 degrees as we have already discussed that means your vector will be at minus 90 degrees if this is 0 degrees where is minus 90 this is minus 90 isn't it. So XC will be along 90 degrees like this and this is the closing side which is the impedance. So if you write this in complex form it can be written as either R plus JXL or R minus JXC that is the impedance and uh, the angle between the hypotenuse and this side this is only called as the impedance angle theta and as you know this theta is nothing but tan inverse of x by r okay. Now what I will do is I will convert this impedance triangle into a triangle called as a power triangle. So simply what I will do is let us take this diagram only on both sides I will multiply with i square then what it comes out to be then I will get i square into z plus i square into r plus j i square into xl. What is i square into z I told you apparent power i square into r is active power plus j i square into xl is reactive power consumed by that inductor understood. So I can uh, replace these things r will become p that means power consumed by resistor is p as I told you power consumed by the reactor is reactive power and the total power is the apparent power s understood. Now the angle between apparent power and uh, active power is this theta which is also called as impedance angle. So I can tell for a circuit its impedance angle which is generally called theta okay in an impedance triangle that particular angle is called as impedance triangle but when you are writing a power triangle this impedance angle is also called as power factor angle and power factor angle generally it is represented by some angle or some uh, representation by phi okay impedance angle is theta power factor angle is phi understood. So power factor angle means what? the angle between apparent power and active power itself is the power factor angle understood whereas when you say impedance angle what is the impedance angle angle between r and z only is the impedance angle okay now the, both are the same just the type of triangle this is an impedance triangle now converted into power triangle so in power triangle that angle is called as power factor angle in impedance triangle it is called as impedance angle so if this is the power factor angle what will be the value of power factor angle equal to power factor angle will be equal to tan inverse of imaginary power that is reactive power by real power that is p. So there is a factor called as power factor. Power factor. What do you mean by power factor? See power factor represents how much amount of power is been actually used out of total power. So if you look at this particular power triangle can you tell me what is the resultant power or the total power? Apparent power itself is the resultant power. Why? Because this particular circuit which is there it is requiring both active power to dissipate in the resistor it is requiring reactive power because there is some reactive or energy storage element understood. So the combination of this both is S. So out of this total S how much percentage or how much level is the active power why because the power that we actually use is this P only active power is what we actually use reactive power is required by that particular inductor to work understood. For example, we will take an example of any inductive load fan in my house okay fan in my house fan as you know it requires some magnetic flux production therefore you have a winding isn't it you have a winding in a fan winding in a fan is nothing but an inductive winding it is an inductor okay. So basically you are providing an inductive circuit or an inductive winding in a fan the purpose is to produce flux 
understood to produce flux but actually you are utilizing this flux as a medium to transfer the power understood you are giving input to a fan what you are giving electrical energy as an input to this fan and uh, you are getting mechanical energy as an output so between electrical energy input and mechanical energy output you require some medium or a link that is only called as a magnetic medium to produce this magnetic medium you require the reactive power but actually what you are transferring you are transferring the actually actually you are transferring the active power only the mechanical power what you are getting outside is the active power only but in order to transfer this active power you require a link between input side and output side which is a magnetic link because you know this is based on magnetism only so that magnetism is produced by the reactive power so this power is not actually used to us so that is the reason why we have come up with this factor called as a power factor so in this power factor what we will define is how much is the active power out of total reactive power total apparent power so power factor is given by p by s since this is a triangle right angle triangle this theta is also equal to phi i told you i can write p by s p by s is not adjacent side by hypotenuse that is nothing but cos phi isn't it this is also called as cos phi so therefore power factor generally called as cos phi is nothing but how much ratio of active power is present per total apparent power that is called as power factor okay so i hope you got good clarity about power factor angle okay now if you look at this particular power factor angle this belongs to which circuit this is an inductive circuit isn't it as you know so in this inductive circuit what is the power factor angle i mean positive or negative the angle is on above 0 degrees isn't it above 0 degrees axis therefore this is a positive angle only okay positive angle therefore what is the total value this is the s so i can write in polar form s at an angle plus phi so in polar form you can write the total apparent power is equal to the magnitude s at an angle plus phi suppose this is a capacitive circuit isn't it this is for a capacitive circuit so for a capacitive circuit this would become what this would become q isn't it and this would become active power p and this would become the apparent power s so for a capacitive circuit then apparent power can be represented in polar form at minus angle with the minus angle so whenever in the question you see for an apparent power when represented in polar form angle is positive means it represents it is a inductive circuit when the angle is minus it represents it is a capacitive circuit similarly if you are writing impedance also so impedance also will be same like power only so if you are having impedance with a positive angle then it is an inductive circuit if you are having an impedance with negative angle minus theta then it is a capacitive circuit okay but when you talk about current i have already discussed about this if you are having some current as like this i at an angle of minus phi then it corresponds to inductive angle inductive circuit okay current is different and for capacitive circuit current will be plus phi like this understood so this is for an inductive circuit and this is for a capacitive circuit okay please keep this in mind it is very very important okay guys so this is about apparent power active power reactive power as well as power factor and uh, the ways to represent uh, the powers impedances or currents in polar form in specific because many students get confused where to use minus angle or where to use positive angle and how to determine which type of circuit based on that given angle in polar form because polar form of representation is widely used especially for that matter in competitive exams also so it will be very much helpful if you are clear with this table okay thank you for watching